And uh, could you define love in any way? No. <laughs> too many different things, too many different types. All consuming, or very gentle, and just respect, I suppose, is probably the most important thing. I wouldn't have been, obviously, before, but I mean, just it, something mutual, something respectful. Not demanding, but acknowledging. Twelve years ago, I met a girl and I fell in love with her straight away. So I told her so. I told her she was the girl for me. And um, I courted her for two weeks. And I asked her to marry me after two weeks. But the trouble is, there was somebody else chasing her at the same time. So after two weeks of thinking about it, she decided to choose the other man. Moving on 12 years. Being in London again, I met somebody who told me that this girl had been asking about me. And I said, well, is she still the girl that I remember? The beautiful Adrienne. And he said, she certainly is, and she'd like to see you. So an hour later, she was sitting beside me, and the sparks were flying. It was incredible. We actually couldn't keep our hands off each other, even though we'd never touched each other before. We hadn't even really kissed before. But the thing was, I had to come back to Ireland the next day after that. So, it was fleeting. But she asked my permission to come and visit me. And within two days, she was here in Ireland visiting me. And we spent five wonderful days traveling in West Cork in Kerry. It was blissful, to say the least. After five days, she returned to London, and I visited her in London a week later. And I took her to a park in South London, somewhere where we had been 12 years previously. It just so happens that the place was a pub called The Surprise. So I took her back to The Surprise and I asked her to marry me. I got down on my knees and she just stared at me for 10 minutes without saying a word. I knew I was leaving and she knew I was leaving and it was very, you know, it was very, I don't know, very, very sad, like in whatever I was. We're kind of walking backwards away from each other. This we're about 200 yards away, and I realised she had my jumper, so I had to run all the way back. Like we did the whole thing over again. It was very kind of over the top, teenage kind of <laughs> business, and um, very sweet though. And so anyway, I got fired, and I got up, went up to Dublin. I decided I was going to get some work, and I'd move over. I'd move over to Spain. She was going to be going back at the end of the season, and I'd go and and go over there and live with her and so I got three jobs I was working as a kitchen porter this up in Bray I was a painter decorator and I was doing peeling potatoes for six hotels at the same time I was working like a lunatic I was working 15 hours a day seven days a week to save up enough money to go over and see her and um, so but I was still very young and very kind of idealistic or whatever and uh, a bit naive, you know. <laughs> a bit naive or whatever. So um, I, I packed my bag and I had like one school bag full of stuff to go and live in Spain with, and um, that's what that's what I took with me. And I got a I got a cheap flight over to um, to 
Paris at one way Ryanair 17 pound flight to Paris and I hitched down then to Madrid and uh, I'd been it took me a few days and I was fairly scruffy and I hadn't had changed clothes or anything and I was under the impression that I was going to be able to she lived with her parents that I was going to be able to um, move in with her she told me that like and uh, Sure, I arrive up like, and I hadn't washed in days, you know, I was filthy, like, and obviously broke, like, holes in my clothes and everything like that, and I turned up and, uh, my parents just took one look at me and fucked me out. <laughs> so, uh, I was, um, I was sleeping rough then for, um, for about three months, and, uh, I'd meet up with her, she was going to college, and I'd, I'd be sitting up a tree waiting for her to come out of college, and I'd come down, and I was getting dirtier and scruffier and dirtier and scruffier, scruffier, and I'd wake up and I'd go down, and I'd go down to an Irish bar and people buy me whiskeys and things like that, and I'd, uh, then I'd do that in the afternoon and just meet her sort of half drunk, filthy, stinking, and <laughs> just, but still very kind of happy with things, and she was getting more and more kind of freaked out, she was trying to get me a job and a place to live, like, and I, I got it, she got me a job interviewing an English school and I went in, like, Romantic love. Um, no, anything you want, it doesn't have to be romantic.